In this video, I want to talk about eukaryotic regulation of gene expression. So in eukaryotes, gene expression can be regulated in a variety of ways. So those three ways that I'm going to talk about are transcriptional regulation, post-transcriptional regulation, and post-translational modifications. So transcript transcriptional regulation involves controlling RNA polymerase activity. So RNA polymerase carries out transcription. So if we control or regulate how that RNA polymerase is working, how how much is it working, how often is it working, so basically how much of a certain gene is transcribed. Because if more if this, if a gene is transcribed more, that means there will be more mRNA. More mRNA means more protein product. So this involves if we're if we're controlling RNA polymerase activity, it involves of course basal transcription factors, which are the transcription factors that um, have to show up at all the promoters. So this includes transcription factors that we've talked about, D and HEFAB. There are also these things called specific transcription factors, and these only exist for certain genes, and for certain genes they might have a, you know, a different transcription factor than another gene. So maybe gene 1 requires this transcription factor, but gene 10 you know, requires a different transcription factor, but they would both require all the same basal transcription factors. So, the next thing is post-transcriptional regulation of mRNA. So, mRNA, once, um, once it's made, it can be modified via this process called alternative splicing, and I actually want to write that in hot pink because I want it to be an important idea. Alternative splicing is actually something we'll talk about in a, in a later video. So alternative splicing or alternative processing is another way that it's known. This is the idea that the same mRNA sequence can be spliced in a variety of ways. Another post-transcriptional form of regulation is that mRNA, once it's after it's been transcribed, it needs to go from the nucleus in eukaryotes, from the nucleus to the cytoplasm, in order to be translated. So if if it's controlled how much and how often the transcribed mRNA is being sent to the cytoplasm, that sort of regulates how much will eventually be translated. Another thing, a, a post-transcriptional modification, or excuse me, a post-transcriptional form of regulation, is the stability of the mRNA in the cytoplasm. So once the mRNA is even at the cytoplasm, how much of it is actually going to be translated before it's degraded? So there are nucleases all over the place, right? If these nucleases get to it quickly, like what is it that is going to protect this mRNA, right? If the mRNA uh, lasts longer in the cytoplasm, more of it will be translated. If it doesn't last as long in the cytoplasm, it not, not as much will be translated. So those are all happening after transcription is finished. The last thing is post-translational modification. And this usually involves protease activity, which, oops, not pre, protease. Protease activity. A protease is an enzyme that cuts proteins. So after an mRNA has been translated and you have a particular polypeptide chain, it can be cleaved by a protease. So Generally speaking, what proteases do is when, when they do cut proteins, they take them from inactive precursors and turn them into active proteins. The inactive precursors are usually called zymogens, and they usually end in ogen. But an example that I came up with is, uh, or that I didn't really come up with it, but it's one of the examples, is that insulin is an active uh, peptide hormone. So it has precursors that are called pre-pro-insulin, and that's actually cleaved via protease, and it turns into insulin. And then there's further protease activity that cuts it and turns it into insulin. I actually have another video on that in enzyme regulation, so check that video out if you want more details on this. Another example is chymotrypsinogen, chymotrypsinogen, which is a digestive enzyme. This needs to be cleaved and turned into chymotrypsin, which is the active protein. 
So these these post translational modifications basically tell you like if 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 these proteins came from a, a certain gene, then how often we turn these inactive precursors into the active uh, active proteins is a form of regulating exactly how it's being expressed. Hope that video was helpful in a sort of overview kind of fashion. It was a bunch of words, so it might have been boring, and I apologize for that, but I hope that was helpful. I am a tutor. If you live in Southern California, feel free to contact me via email at moofuniversity at gmail.com. See the description below for more details. Thank you for watching.